This viral TikTok is breaking down the different tiers of pretty privilege for women. So we're going to break down what's true and what's false. Yeah, this went super viral on TikTok. Let's run the clip. Oh. Today I'm going to explain pretty privilege because yes, I do experience pretty privilege, but there are tiers to pretty privilege and I'm on the lower tier. So pretty privilege has three <laughs> tiers. There's entry level, eight tier, and model status. So entry level pretty privilege includes all the girls that are a little bit above average looking, but they're not like the prettiest girls you've ever seen, but you would definitely consider them pretty. Being on this level gets you some privileges. Like you can get free drinks at a bar. People want to help you if you're in need. People are generally nice to you. They give you the benefit of the doubt. And this is the category that I would put myself in. And to put this on the one through 10 scale, this would be the high sixes and the sevens. You're pretty enough to be treated well because of it, but you're not pretty enough to make a lifestyle out of it. Oh. So one level above that is what I call eight tier. And that's your eights of the world. And these girls are generally the prettiest girls in the room. They're the prettiest girls you see in real life on an average day. And these are the girls that draw attention because of how how pretty they are when you're on this level you get all the privileges of entry level but multiplied instead of being able to access benefits you're getting offered benefits so people will give you mm. free drinks without even talking to you people will give you free food people will just give you free things honestly People flock around you. Either girls really want to be your friend or they're very jealous of you and they hate on you. And boys are very obsessed with you. You have the halo effect, which is where people think highly of you just because of the way that you look. It's not based on merit, but people will just mm. think that you're nicer, you're funnier, you're smarter, all because of the way that you look. These girls are immediately likable because of how pretty they are, and they experience the world differently than everybody else does. And the final pretty privileged tier is model status. And that's gonna be your nines and tens. These are gonna be the people that you almost never see in real life. <laughs> these are the people that you see on it's social true. media, that you see on your TV. These are models, these are celebrities, these are influencers. These people make a living off of how pretty they are. They have the halo effect times a thousand, and people want to do things for them just because of how pretty they are. They can get almost anything for free. They can get anywhere for free. They can get into the upper echelon of society just because of the way that they look. Now, why did yeah. I just explain all this? Because people like to comment on my videos saying, oh, the reason that that happened to you, the reason that you got this thing, the reason that people were nice to you was pretty privileged. It has nothing to do with you and what you did. It's all about the way that you look. And while pretty privilege gets my foot in the door, I've learned how to maximize my pretty privilege by being socially adept and by surrounding myself with people that are prettier than me. Being an entry level pretty privilege doesn't automatically mean that people are going to give me things or be nice to me because of the way that I look. But it does mean that because of the way that I look, I have the ability to manipulate them in specific ways to get a certain outcome and to get the things that I want from them. Oh. It's not a given, but being pretty is a tool that I can use to my advantage. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you don't know me, I'm Vic and I'm a diagnosed psychopath. And I talk about <laughs> being a psychopath on my page. So if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and follow along. And thanks for all right, man, Vic, the diagnosed psychopath. I don't really know what that means at the end, but regardless, man, what she said was a pretty good breakdown. Now, I think there's some disagreement on the tick marks, maybe the numbers, but essentially she kind of broke it down in tears. That yeah, was I mean, I think that there's probably negative pretty privilege. There's neutral, but she was discussing only the three tiers in the advantage category. Right. Like light advantage, medium advantage, and high advantage. And of course, you would imagine it's sort of like a pyramid distribution. There's probably a lot more girls at the entry six or seven level than the tier eight, obviously, versus the eight, nine, 10 model tier. Right, now, whether or not you personally think this girl, Vic, is actually in the lowest tier or the middle tier, uh, she's definitely in that tier. I could see what she means. She is pretty. Yeah, she could have even been possibly underplaying herself. I could imagine in a world her being more in the well, eight Well, part level, of the pretty honest. privilege here is that this video got so many views because she's even this cute versus, let's be honest, if it was a lesser good looking girl, it might even get less views. Well, because people might not believe it. Right. They, it comes from a wealth of real life experience. Right. Anyway, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smile Ass Sauce at smileassauce.com. Hotter than uh, whatever level of pretty privilege we're talking about. Anyway, let's get into the comment section. Somebody said, it's so real, but it fades. People who used to be pretty and now aren't go through a crisis where they find out how good they had it. Yeah, I mean, I could see this in a lot of the older, good-looking women that I meet. Uh, I, I don't think every good-looking woman handles it poorly as they grow older and kind of lose their hotness. But I will say this, there's still got to even be a pretty privilege when you're older, too. Because if people at least can see that you're like a hot old lady, like a hot lady cougar fox, 
that's still going to benefit your life. You know what I noticed is some of the older ladies that are, when, when let's just say, when the looks start to fade 40, 50, 60, Andrew, you can maintain it by holding, hanging out with even older guys. Yeah, yeah that's true. No. So you're the young girl Dude, of the super oldies. That, at any age, if you're a pretty girl, a men will appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, but it, it really depends on your fishbowl positioning. I think that this even works like... Some people's whole life goal is to maintain high tier pretty, pretty privilege and they'll go into any world that allows them to maintain it. Right, right, right. Anyways, uh, do pretty privilege for guys next. David, is there a pretty privilege for men? Is it considered the halo effect? Really, what do you think? And, and should we make a video about okay, it? Okay, absolutely. There is pretty privilege for men. However, I do think that it works different than for women because, mm. hey, listen, guys, don't be offended. The world is still controlled by men and men typically control access to liquidity or capital, which is like, uh, you know, the money needed to fund certain lifestyles. It's typically in 2024, still a lot of that is controlled by men. So how can, can, so that's why I'm saying it's different. I think men's pretty privilege is more applicable in social settings or when it comes to dating, mm. but less to career. Sure, 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 sure. But uh, yeah, I think that there's a whole video that's worth it. I mean, this, Andrew, this was like a hundred different replies in the do it for the men thing. Right, that's right, a whole right. different video. We could break down this whole comment section for the men's, but- uh, um, Somebody wanted, Andrew, actual examples of the uh, 9, 10 tier. So we have Leah Halton and Olivia Culpo. So let's just do some Oh quick my God. Who <laughs> are they? Um, now, here's the thing. <laughs> Let me just say this. If you have a ethnically ambiguous look, but still a little bit European, but a little bit ethnic like these girls, Andrew, and you have millions of Instagram followers that are not faked, I'm going to go ahead and say I can see why that's pushing our 9 or a 10 status. Would you agree? Jeez. Yeah. No, definitely they're top tier I would say, and yeah, like your things like your Kylie Jenner's. Well, Kylie Jenner comes with a lot of status as well. But so dude, her family and yeah. not being from and, the old and money And again, family. I personally do think that when it comes to pretty privilege, status and all that stuff still does play into it a little bit. Right. But of course, it's mostly based on just how you physically look and present yourself. Right. And present yourself is important. But if we really want to get into the whole looks thing, these girls, Andrew, may be a 10 on Instagram, but in real life, they may not be actually be able to supermodel for Victoria's mm. Secret because there's a lot of height and gait and like different requirements necessary for that. I noticed a lot of Instagram baddies that are 10 out of 10s, they're a little bit shorter. David, what about this? What if I said they're functionally a 10? I, like all these girls are functionally a 10, meaning that their life is that of a 10 out of 10. Meaning that when you reach a certain level of pretty and you present yourself out there on Instagram, and let's be honest, guys start contacting you and wanting you to go to places. And you, you, are, you are you saying Dubai, Andrew? It, I'm not, I don't know, in any places personally, because I haven't been invited, but I'm just saying that when you get invited, a, a functionally, you're a 10 out of 10. You're living the life of a but, 10 out of 10. But if you talk to actual models, they hate on the 10 out of 10 Instagram because they're like, dude, 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 these girls are getting as much, if not more money than these models out here. Let's be honest. I know what you, but it's different. It's different. It's, it's not. different. But I, in my opinion, I'm going to say functionally just on the same. Yes, tier. yes, yes. If you want to get into the micro of it, there's some differences, but essentially I agree with you. Somebody said uh, pretty privilege is real, but I also think that attitude and confidence plays such a huge part. And somebody said, no, that's not true. And there was a lot of arguing back and forth on how much the attitude or confidence impacts it. Uh, for women, I, of course, I still think everything is somewhat of a factor, but mul mostly it is how you look. It's uh, mostly how you look. Right, right, right. Um, somebody said brain rot. Can you, we expand that comment where basically these people are saying like, this is so stupid. This is internet brain rot, which is actually a common term. You hear a little bit like gaslighting. You know what I mean? Like a it's modern brain internet rot term. meaning on the internet. And, um, but I did see a lot of comments, people of people saying, uh, dude, you guys can't accept reality. You have Disney goggles on. Mm. This girl is not brain rot. She's clearly speaking the truth because she has a bunch of other viral videos breaking down a bunch of other difficult or embarrassing or cringe things to talk about in right. a very lucid way. But other people were attributing it, Andrew, to her psychopathicness, allowing her to break it down without uh, embarrassment. Man, all right, man. I don't know if she's a psychopath. She says she's a diagnosed psychopath. Is that self-diagnosed? And what even really is a psychopath? Ooh, ooh. What's it different than a sociopath? Is that different than like autism? I don't know. 
We don't know. It could be a combination. Of we those don't know. Like, I, I got to look into it because I'm not just going to believe her when she says that. But either way, what she said has some truth to it. There's this one comment that says, uh, what if every girl I see is the prettiest girl I've ever seen? I don't really know what that means. I guess that's just something. But isn't this be because a lot of women do say that to each other? And it's not wrong. I understand why. But there's a very interesting Michelle Wolf clip that we have to refer to, Andrew, oh. for every woman considering every other woman beautiful. Oh, this, this clip is funny. We're all beautiful. Well, first of all, that means we're still valuing women on beauty. <laughs> we're like, well, you have to be beautiful to be important, so we'll just make sure every woman feels beautiful. <laughs> Which is maybe not the right metric. <laughs> also, a uh, little problem with that plan, we're not all beautiful. <laughs> because you've seen someone who's not. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, that's different. <laughs> than that. How dare you? How dare you want every woman to be beautiful? Don't you think there's women out there who knew they were ugly? They knew they were ugly, so they got good at something. They got respected for their abilities. <laughs> and then, and then some little bitch comes up to her and she's like, "You're." Beautiful. He's like, no, shut up. I got a horse face and I'm an electrical engineer. <laughs> we gotta stop. We gotta stop with all this beautiful nonsense. I think we should even stop telling little girls they're beautiful. I think as soon as they can understand us, you look that little girl right in the eye and you go, with a face like that, you get good at math. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, Andrew, what'd you think of Michelle Wolf's clip? Michelle Wolf is known for sort of like, I don't want to say like thinking like a guy, but being a female comedian. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad a female made that joke. Uh, I thought it was funny. Um, I think it does touch on like a harsh truth or a harsh thought that obviously a lot of people have. Mm. And she made it into a joke. Uh, the joke is that obviously if you're not that good looking, you got to be good at something. I went on a date with this girl who is a computer science engineer back end. And she told me she really enjoys being what is considered a top 1% of her field. But it also makes her no, want- In looks. Yeah, in no, looks. In looks. You're and saying she, that yeah. this is a cute computer engineer. Yeah, but she said that made her also want to stay away from the entertainment or modeling worlds, even though some people thought she could touch those a little bit, because then she felt like she would know what it's like to drop back down to the bottom of the totem pole of that given totem pole. All right, I got a question for everybody out there. Would would you rather be the bottom of the high tier or the highest of a low tier? Meaning, is your life better if you're like the hottest electrical engineer or you want to be like just the barely scra scraping it as a model? Uh, well, the truth is, in my quick read, it's better to be the king of a puddle. <laughs> or the queen of, you know what I mean? A smaller totem pole, not no, a puddle. You mean to it's be not a, like a puddle versus the ocean. It depends on how big that right, micro right, right. fish bowl you can be queen it, of. It's is. bigger, better to be the bigger fish in the smaller pond than the uh, smaller fish in like a big lake. Mentally, bro? Yeah, it's better It's better for your mental. Um, What else we have here? We said, uh, I am barely entry level pretty and I can see the difference when I'm around prettier girls. It's crazy. And then somebody said, I'm a below average girl. People are mean to me for no reason. Dang. Um, any other really interesting I, comments? I think my overall, I mean, to end off some positive on a positive note, because like, you know, uh, for super regular looking people or not so good looking people, I guess, I guess what would be your advice? Like, do you think that with a certain attitude and presentation, it can essentially make up for it? Not put you in the high tier because you can't go from the lowest, you know, non pretty to the highest tier pretty privilege, right? Yeah, realistically, that you probably have one level of standard deviation. But depending on, well, like I'm terms of your own self-control over the situation. But then if you location shift, there's potentially like another standard deviation available. Right. Or maybe if you get these certain enhancements, you can go up another tier. But essentially, I guess I would say for those very, I guess that's why it is important why people tell you like how you present yourself matters. Because how you present yourself and how you at least, uh, you know, take care of yourself is essentially you maxing out your self maximizing yourself within reason right. going beyond reason is getting like enhancements and all that stuff in my opinion but within reason you still have some room to shift and make your situation better right 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 so i mean i guess i would say this 
I think that what she said was the truth. I do notice that a lot more difficult discussions, Andrew, that in the past were un PC to have. Maybe in the 1960s they were okay to have. Then for like a 30 year span, it became un PC. It seems like it's coming back into play and people are more willing to discuss it on a more, more like harsh reality, unspoken truth level. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I hope that only speaking about it doesn't. I mean, I think it is twofold for some people knowing the issue is better so that they can do something about it. But also, I heard that it, it is kind of getting weighing in on people's mental health to kind of understand too much of their own problems, right? And their right. shortcomings, right? So I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section below how you feel about it. Do you think these types of conversations are actually truly helpful to you? Or is there some point where you're like, all right, I don't want to hear about this anymore. I just want to live my life and I don't want to have to think about how much people are judging me. Yes, yes, yes. I think that her biggest nuance that she lacked in her video, Vic the Psychopath, was that it still matters a lot the fishbowl that you inhabit. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say, for example, like we said, if you're the hottest engineer in a field that is like overly dominated by not hot guys who really only respect girls with super big brains, so now you're the hottest chick of a girl who's good at computer science and you've got a really big brain, that's gonna put you in a completely different tier of comparison over like an IG model with a quote unquote, like, you know, viewed, perceived as a low IQ. Right, right. Because why would you want to be a bottom tier IG model that's not good at anything versus a high, high a very hot nerd who is good at stuff? Right. The I would say take the hot nerd. Take the hot nerd right. status, definitely. Yeah, for example, like a guy like a Zuckerberg or whatever, like he probably, he's only even gonna, like let's just say for, I'm not saying he's the, the catch of the century, right? But I'm just saying, if you wanted to find a guy like that, he probably is only respecting women with a certain type of cognition ability that he's even look, has his gaze on. Right, right, right. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Um, is this relevant? Is it irrelevant? Is this something that everybody always aware was aware of, but you needed a hot girl to break it down in hyper harsh terms? All right, let us know what you guys think about the format of this video. Hit that like button. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.